Good day there, podcaster. Yes, and welcome to a podcast which, on average, we gave a C minus today. We did a little um, it's a bit of off air for you. We did a uh, well, for an the exercise first time where we, we like marked our show. Yeah, yeah, we broke it down, and I quite like the analytics of it. So what we did was we scored each break out of ten, mm-hmm. and then so there was uh, I think fourteen breaks in total, and then at the end you divide your uh, scores by fourteen, and then you get your average. It's very interesting. So it's, for each me, of us gave a different average for the show. Yep. Um, not not the best. Bell, no, well, you're Bell, yeah, you judge things a little bit harshly. Uh, Liam, below you're in the middle. Five, so. Yeah, I gave it a, a six point three. I gave it a five. What? Well, hang on, are we got now? We're leading well, Bell, people you, you into. Well, go on. The, well, my mind was a four point eight. Yeah, we'll just see what you reckon. You make your own mind up. <laughs> yeah, score each break out of ten. Do the maths in your own head. I would love that. <laughs> We've got that uh, Ben Liam and Bell app squad, like our secret yeah. Facebook page, it's yeah. like a forum. Put in your average score. So what you do yeah. is you, you score out of 14 10, breaks out of 10. Then you add all those breaks together mm-hmm. and then you divide it by 14. People yeah. know how to get the average. Did all 14 breaks make it? No, not everyone does. Did, yeah. did all 14 Year breaks make maths. it? In? You're laughing if you think all so, 14 breaks made it. Well, that it means in. the math won't be right. So you have okay. to just divide it by the number of breaks you scored. A few, a few are so shit that we didn't put them in. So. You still get the same type of average. It doesn't like yeah. Anyway, no, no, I'm not no, 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 no. Yes, you do. I don't think it will. You have to divide it by the number of breaks. So if you did ten scores, you divide uh-huh. it by ten yeah, to get yeah. your average. You don't divide so, by fourteen. Say, so say there's only how many breaks are in the podcast? Oh, I don't know. Let's eight. say eight. Okay, eight. So you still score every every break out, out of, of eight 10. plus that out of ten. Uh, sorry, out of ten plus them all together. Yes, and then divide it by eight. That's what we're saying. Get... We're saying don't divide it by fourteen. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. don't divide it by 14, Well, obviously. hey, it seems what you've done is you've tried to outsmart the test, <laughs> but you didn't read the question right, so unfortunately you still fail. Um, anyway, just, like just us today. enjoy the pod. <laughs> well, yesterday was a dark day in Australian television, Ben and Bell. David Koshy Kosh quit Channel 7 Sunrise after more than 20 years in the chair. And this morning, the rumour mill is running wild. Who's going to co-host with that bar? I mean, is it going to be... Channel 7 star and former Olympian Matt Shervington. Seems like they've been sort of getting him ready for that role. Is it going to be Dr. Chris Brown? I mean, he recently signed an eye-watering seven deal. Will he Will he be taking top spot? Mm. I don't know. I, I could see it. What about our mate Sam Mack, a long-standing weatherman and Sunrise favourite? Either way, everyone is gunning for Koshy's seat. Imagine if uh, Kyle jumped ship from nine to Whoa. seven. Jeez, I mean, that That'd would be shake big. things up. Be like that time he quit for a year and came back. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, they do yeah. shake things up sometimes. Yeah. Um, well, there is a report um, coming out of the offices that the cash cow thought he was a shoe in for the main <laughs> hosting role. <laughs> and that and that's fair. I mean, when you think, you know, it's kind of, you know, cash cow's been the quiet achiever of Sunrise, yep. very much doing a lot of man hours, working some long weeks. Cow travel, hours. Cow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, travelling all over the country, giving away the cash. Um, and here on Nova this morning, we have some exclusive audio from the Channel 7 boardroom. Mr. Fitzgibbons, your nine o'clock is here. Ray. Who? Ray, the, uh, the cash cow. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't have time for this. All right, send him in. Ray, good to see you, mate. <laughs> Ray, take the cow head off. <laughs> Ray, take the head off. Oh, sorry, boss. Listen, thanks for seeing me. Uh, after Koshy's big announcement, I think it's really time in my career that I step up. You want to do two cash giveaways a morning? No, Mr Fitzgibbons, I, I want the top job. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, wait, you're serious? Yeah. Oh, no, Ray, no. No, not you. What, why? God, no. No, look, Ray, listen, there's two types of people in this world. There's the Koshies. And there's the cows. And I'm sorry, mate, but but you're a cow. I'm ready for it, mate. I've been doing cash cow for 13 years. You said it was temporary. Ray, stop. Got a journalism degree. I need to pay off my hex debt. Ray, I don't think that this is... Mate, the... I'm a laughing stock. My kids don't respect me. I get paid 15 grand per annum, including super. I'm a grown man in a f***ing cow suit. A wife left me. I appreciate you're upset. But you need to understand, with Koshy leaving the Sunrise team and the Today Show nipping at our heels, the stakes have never been higher. Are you taking the piss? Look, consider yourself lucky. These positions are rare. 
<laughs> They're medium rare. I know what you're doing, Gavin. I've heard the jokes around the office, and I've seen you with my ex-wife. Ray, calm your farm. Calm my farm? I've given everything to this role. Have you ever vomited in a cow suit from heat stroke after a live cross in Cooper Pini? I have, Gavin. I have. Look, Ray, you're never going to be a host. You're never going to be Koshy. But as a show of faith, we're going to beef up your paycheck. All right, well, that's actually... Hey, hang on. Beef? How about this, Gavin? Tomorrow's code word is f you! Sheesh, don't have a cow, man. I heard that! If it's time for a winter trip, jump on What If, the place to go for quick Aussie getaways. Probably somewhere in the snow for me. I'm a big snow guy. For accommodation, flights and more, book on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. Oh, my back is killing me this morning. Do you reckon you could, you know how sometimes you get me to do that uh, back crack thing? You yeah. Just, you just asked me to do that. You reckon you can yeah. do that for me? Yeah, hey, what's the back crack thing? Oh. Where, like, you, so you cross your arms over your chest yeah. yeah. and then someone stands behind you and then you lean oh, back I and then they, do that. they put their arms around you and they pull up and then it gives you like, like a nice back crack. Ben Can I have that. one too, please? Well, is it, does, do you need it? Does your back? I don't know. Maybe I well, do. It is harder. I try to do it with my wife, Sam, but it's harder. And she's always like, you can't do it properly. I can do it properly, but it's harder when, and I'll be, I'll be blunt, when there's, boobs. when there's boobs involved, <laughs> I can't... Squ- uh, with Liam, I'll squeeze as hard as I can, maybe, and that's what maybe does we it. Should... Mine, mine could also pop. That's yeah. also a problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we should wait until after 9am when the HR team can just... To... <laughs> Bit of an update on the back crack. I did a good one on Liam. Oh, yeah. I got I got through, yeah, three pops, I feel, because I woke up this morning stiff as a board. Yep. And uh, I saw back as well. I... <laughs> That's unnecessary. <laughs> and then I tried to do Bell, but there was no crackage. It's 610. Hallelujah, it's 610. Five questions. You get them all right. You get to choose the next song we play. We also pop you in the draw for 10K a day in May. Marnie playing first this morning in Geelong. Good morning. Good morning. Marnie, sad news. I mean, I don't know if you saw, but Koshy announced yesterday he's quitting Sunrise and Dr. Chris Brown is one of the favourites to replace him. What kind of doctor is Chris Brown? He's a vet. He is. Hey, woolly shoppers are angry at them for raising the subscription price of Everyday Rewards membership. What is the name of the Coles Points program? Mm. There's everyday rewards. Don't think about it too hard, Marnie. When you're at Coles, what comes Coles. up on the screen? <laughs> nah, um, it's, it's the one. I would say it was around longer than rewards. I think. Yeah, like they were the first ones to do it. Yeah. You gonna tap out? Uh, oh, I have no idea. Oh, oh, sorry, been, Marnie. You've been putting in an armbar this morning in the octagon, and you've tapped out. That means we're moving to Monique from Surrey Hills. Let's see if you can last longer. In the UFC style quiz, that is the 16 quiz. Um, <laughs> Woolies shoppers are uh, angry at them for raising the subscription price of the Everyday Rewards membership. What is the name of the Coles Points program? Uh, flyby. She's done it. The premier of WA, Mark McGowan, shocked everyone yesterday when he quit like Koshy. Uh, maybe they're doing a roll swap. Who knows? Uh, saying he's exhausted. Can you name a place in WA other than Perth? You can't say Perth. Rotnest Island? Yep. Yep, well done. Uh, fan of Quokkas, it's a massive day in American sport with a big semi-final between the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat. Did you see, by the way, so we didn't talk about this, did you see the last 10 seconds in that game? I did not. I it did was not. absolutely insane. I'm not going to bore you what with a play-by-play. What play. are we talking about? Well, Basketball. this is the thing. Oh, well, okay, that was the question. Oh, was it? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for reading. There you go. You got a sneaky one. You got away with that, Monique. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like, I didn't know. Like, it was happening in front of me, like when Bell, like, had, um, Bell was asking. I'm like, no, 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 no don't, don't tell. Don't tell. So, what, what sport was it? As if you Basketball. Basketball. You've never heard of the Boston Celtics before or the Miami Heat. You could say, honestly... You've never... You didn't remember when Chris Bosh and LeBron and, like, they're all on the same team? Do you think I remember that? Oh <laughs> I don't even like basketball when I like basketball. You know what I mean? Like, everyone likes basketball. Like, it's it's yeah. cool. All right. Sorry, Monique. That was my fault. But that gets you through to question number five. Now, guys, don't sing, okay? Remember, the caller on the line has to sing. Happy birthday to CeeLo Green. He's 48 today. Can you finish these lyrics? No, you're supposed to do the clean version, Monique. <laughs> we had to dump it. We had to dump it. Uh, that's Monique, okay. I brought you so back. Much we kind of went, that, was, 
That was our fault. Like we, fair, we like, tempted yeah. you with no, that. We, we like to sometimes see where the line is, and you crossed it. You so, went in half. That's I'm okay. But you really <laughs> sang it at the top of your lungs. Because yeah, you can either do the fu version or you can do the forget, forget you. 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 Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. No, no, no. You really you you were singing it like you. It's, it's one of your favourite songs. Uh, okay, well, uh, well done. You have actually won the six ten quiz, so you could be getting a call from Ricky Lee. Tim and Joel at 5pm today. Please don't drop an F-bomb on their show. I don't think they'll be too happy about it. Uh, and you also get to pick the next song we play. So would you like to be taken to the clouds? A bit of LMC and U2. Or do you want to hear Ben Lee this morning? Let's go, Ben Lee. Ben wow. Lee. All right. Okay. They don't play Sleepy Jackson on the radio, and that's the way he likes it. My head is a box filled with nothing, and that's the way I like it. You might want to sit down for this. A urologist has claimed men have been peeing wrong this whole time. Wow. So, As in uh, because they don't get it in the toilet? Well, no, they, so this urologist has come out and said it's better for your health as a man to sit down when you wee, which I think is crazy. I've, I'm, always, I'm always standing up and yeah. shooting my shot. Disagree, Ben. I think uh, I'm glad it's being normalised. I think it's a bit of a sledge. Like, it's you... like a footy sledge to be like, you sit down to wee. Are so you Liam, really a sitter? Liam, you're a sitter. No, in certain situations I am. Um, is that if, why when I go to the to the work toilet, you're sitting in the urinal? <laughs> you know, you know that I am. Uh, I'm standing up next to you when we're at work. <laughs> at work, I stand. If I was out, like you know, at a pub or something, I yep. would. I would, I would um, stand. I, yeah, I don't out yeah, at the footy. I, it's not like I squat in the trough when everyone else so, is using it. But, but but you're telling me at home in the comfort of your own home, you're mm-hmm. choosing to sit down to wee. especially at night because um, yeah, I don't I don't trust the scope. Um, I don't trust my, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's a true scope. So, you know, every now and then um, it's easier, just it's it's more comfortable and safer for everyone just to have a sit down where you just to treat yourself every now and then. Because when, when I can't see, you know, I don't want to be listening for the water. It's hard enough doing it with the lights on. Isn't there the, uh, isn't there some guy fear of the... The witch's um, kiss. The witch's kiss. Yeah, 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 no, well, like, the, I, I, you know, I would sort of, I would and rather... Witch, sorry, for those that don't know, the witch's kiss is when you, when you do sit down... Mm. And if the cold, contact. the cold porcelain, mm. i.e., the witch, does a little <laughs> kiss, yeah, on a certain appendage, and that feels like a, oh, that was like a witch's kiss. Yes, yes, it's also one of the rides at Cryo Castle. Um, but uh, so Ben, for- even in the dark at night, you're yeah. you stand. I yeah, I one, I like to stay warm. So if I've got pants on in bed and I get out of bed, I don't want to have to then pull my pants down to sit on the toilet because that's just going to be cold and the toilet seat's cold. I I w- I will walk in. And I'll kind of like, I'll wait till I, I roughly know where the toilet is. Yeah. I'll walk over to it and then I'll feel the base of the toilet like on my right leg and then my left leg will step up to it. So I kind of like lock it in with my, my knees. <laughs> so like I know where the basin is. Hmm. I know where the target is. And yeah, I don't always hit the target. That's tomorrow's problem. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm like a zombie when I'm asleep. Like, I, I like bump into doors and stuff, and I just got like no yeah. sense of like my eyes are half closed. So I find it it's safer. For, I don't want to be doing that um, thing where you're like mopping it up with your foot. What do you mean? You know what I mean? Like if you if you don't completely get oh, it, you, yeah, yeah, you might yeah, have yeah. to put some toilet paper With on the floor. With your bare just... foot, you oh, smear no, it around no. on the floor. You just got to mop it up. Well, it's better. I mean... And then what? Bring your foot back into bed <laughs> and then put it in the <laughs> well, it sheets. Doesn't, doesn't leave it in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose I'll just sleep here for the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah. This is a thing that happens, Bill. Yeah. So hang on, so hang on. Sorry. No, people, just, people, you got to... Cl- if you if you, if you don't get it quite at all in there, you gotta, yeah. you got to clean you up. you got to mop it up. And so you smear it around your foot if you get it on the floor. With toilet paper. With toilet paper, Liam? Yes, with toilet paper. Yes. What do you mean? What? I what? thought you meant barefoot. Oh, yeah, my, my really <laughs> absorbent uh, barefoot. I just, yeah, what I do is I just like, I skid around in it a little bit. Uh, That's what, bit you of, I, what I do is I pretend I'm a figure skater and I ice skate around the bathroom. Yeah. And like, what do you mean? Of no, course, the you get paper. lots of toilet paper, you throw it on the floor and then you mop oh, it up with your foot. I yes. honestly thought you were doing it with your bare foot and then no. you were going back to bed with your wee foot. <laughs> you just like pushing it down the drain. <laughs> what do you think? Like, just like kicking it around the room. <laughs> yeah, I want you. Baby, so, so, so.
the hottest tickets in town. Everyone wants to go to this gig, Belle. Absolutely. He, uh, well, sorry, Nova and TEG Live are exclusively presenting Niall Horan, the show live on tour 2024. So he's playing Rod Laver Arena on May 3rd next year. Tickets are on sale Friday, 2nd of June, 10 a.m. from Ticketek. It is so exciting. <laughs> Talia from Pasco Vale, are you a big Niall fan? Yes, huge Niall fan. I mean, how big are we talking here? Uh, since One Direction days. Oh, wow. My God. My well, Talia, what if I told you you're heading along to Niall? Oh, uh, yeah. So exciting, Talia. You yes, have oh my God, I'm so excited. called through, though, for our game of denial. So how this works is... <laughs> Eliza from Bayswater also joins us. Hi, Eliza. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. Hey, so now you are going to have the chance to deny Talia's tickets. Like you could take you them. Could denial, you could denial, Nile. Yeah, you could, you could, you could take them for yourself, or right. you can just let her just live a happy life and enjoy the gig next year. It's kind of like Bad Santa, yeah. where you can take the person's gift. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can, I'll be honest. I'm oh, my nice God. Oh, as really? much as I'd like to go with my son. Uh, yeah. Nah. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's Eliza, so amazing. That's so sweet. Well, guess what? For your honour, you shall also be rewarded with tickets. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Talia's going and you're going. This is so wow. exciting. We have so many tickets. But Eliza... <laughs> Alas. Yep, someone can take him for me. <laughs> what? Uh, not the M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> twist we were hoping it would be. It seems you've no. come wise to our plan. This is really showing people's true colours because, Eliza, you obviously have a heart of gold. Mm. You let Talia have the tickets. So sweet. So and she's, she's away scot-free and now. She's got those tickets. And i got to say... The ticket sack is getting emptier yeah. and emptier. It looks like, <laughs> like we, we don't, don't really have actually. That's it. Like there's, these work. are these are pretty limited. Melinda in Caulfield South, would you like to deny or Nile? Would you like to take Eliza's tickets, knowing that she wouldn't do that to someone else? Um, sorry, Eliza, but the answer's yes. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Melinda, you're heading. Denial, and unfortunately, Eliza is no longer, which is so that's so like that's not I'm fair. So sorry, <laughs> that's so rude, <laughs> Eliza. How do you feel? Hey, you know what? That's why I'll take it. I'll oh, take it. I feel yeah, bad so for you, even, even in defeat, <laughs> even in defeat. But you know what, Eliza, you may well get your just desserts because guess what, Melinda in Caulfield South, Jordy no. from Blackburn <laughs> South joins us now. Jordy, how are you? Thank you. How are you? Good. Would you like to deny Melinda's tickets, seeing as she did it to someone else? Um, I feel like she doesn't really deserve them, but I don't think I have it in my heart to take them. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, we do not have any honour tickets left. So it seems, Melinda in Caulfield South, you're still going to deny <laughs> Arguably a bad person, but I suppose it's a dog-eat-dog dog world sometimes. Yeah, it really is. Hey, look, we have got more Nile tickets to give away tomorrow, I believe. So if you want to win Nile Horan tickets, keep it on Nova. Let's do it! Winky Dinky Tuesday, what happened in your life? Give us a call if you've had a coincidence. For instance, you might have had an Uber driver twice. If you don't make it on, we'll do this bit again. Oh, this is super exciting. Uh, this is my favourite segment, favourite thing to do here at Nova. And Ben and Bell, um, there's been a little bit of resistance uh, from your side of the table, but... You've probably heard of that ye olde analogy. Uh, you give a man a fish, you know, he'll eat for a day. But if you if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. And it, it brings me so much joy um, that I've created such a space, a safe space for coincidences that now my friends will come to me and say, I've actually got a Quinky Dinky Tuesday. Bill, you've got one. Which tells me that you have all along actually liked this. I haven't been against it. 
I appreciate good ones. No, but and that's I the think thing. <laughs> when you've got one, you want to tell people. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You, you might think it's lame, but when you get one, you realise the power of a good coincidence. Then I think you might appreciate mine as well, Okay, even. great. All right. So I live currently on the Mornington Peninsula of Melbourne, um, kind of Caram Downs way. And my mum and her boyfriend live across the bay in Geelong. So completely opposite the water, right? Yeah. Now, Melbourne is huge. Millions of people. My mum's boyfriend sold his van that he owned before his current one, sold his van, his work van, to just a stranger. Just a random person online. Mm. Sold it. Mm. Gone. Mm. Went with the number plate, everything. Now, that was a few months ago. They came round to my house across the bay on the other side of Melbourne and next door was his old van. No way. And the guy next door to us where we just moved in bought his old van. That is a kawinky dink. That's a good one. And thank the Lord it's a Tuesday because (laughs) we've been able to be lucky enough to hear that. 13, 24, 10. <laughs> if you've got one, call us. We honestly love these. Uh, there's only two days left to get in the draw for $10,000 with Nova's 10K a day in May. Tom in Footscray, you have a coincidence. I sure do. Good morning, Ben Lehman Bell. Good How morning. Are we? Very good. Thanks, Tom. Fire away. Yeah, so when my parents were naming me, right, they've decided to give me a really pompous name mm. uh, and give me two middle names. Mm. Um, Thomas James Campbell Reynolds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then 28 years later, I move out with one of my good friends uh, and about six months into us living together, a bit of mail comes for him, Henry James Campbell Doyle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not that good. That's not as good. What not- the heck? <laughs> Look, they're not they're not that's the rarest of names. Now given but... given Tom, my middle Campbell. name is also James. That's not the crazy bit. <laughs> yeah, the cra- yeah, the crazy Campbell, bit right? Campbell. I mean who there's yeah, not many true. Campbell. There's Campbell Brown, there's Campbell Soup. That you know like, uh, Yeah. Holy Clint, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Very good, Tom. Not as good cool. not, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna rate these, not as good as Bell's was. Hey, it's not a competition. Sorry, Tom. Tash and Geelong, tell us about your Kawinky Dink. Um, I was at the beach with a girlfriend and we were about, I don't know, it was a family holiday. We would have been 12 or 13 at the most. Mm. And there was a cute boy and we called him Orange Board Shorts. Anyway, we (laughs) talked about him all summer, Orange Board Shorts. He was the cutest. Maybe almost 20 years later, I started dating this man and I went to his parents' house and I was looking at photos on the wall and not only was he Orange Board Shorts, we were in the background. No! No, 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 no. That's cool. (laughs) No way. Yeah. Was he, when, like, in the moment you realised who it was, was he wearing orange board shorts? He, no, he wasn't. He wasn't wearing it at the time. But Tash. in the photo, he was wearing the orange board so, shorts. Yeah, yeah. Tash, did crazy. you immediately tell him and say, oh, my gosh, we talked about you and, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, I was a bit more cool than that. I just pointed out, I was like, that's actually me in the no background. No way. Why did you have to tell him? That's really cool. In my head, because I knew where that story was going, I thought you were going to be going through his drawers or something and you found the orange board Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why Ben's trying to pick holes in your actual incredible and story dash. Like, I mean, if anyone said that anywhere in a room, it like, doesn't matter what, yeah, where you no, are in the world, good. if you say that at a dinner table, everyone's like, that's an incredible story. But it's good. Uh, unfortunately, you can't you know, impress the well, poor of all things coincidence. Tash is our first caller here for these next three. I mean, so... how, how are we... Sonia, from the Mornington Peninsula, surely you, can't, you don't have a better story than that, surely. I don't know if I can top that one, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Melbourne Cup, uh, my sister likes to pick birthdays and that sort of thing. She has a bit of a study of what gates um, horses are coming out of and so on. Mm. Uh, So Michelle Payne's win. Um, My sister's name is Michelle. Michelle. Uh, Both our brothers' names are Stephen. Mm. Uh, Both our brothers have Down syndrome. Mm. They Michelle's birthday is the 19th, which is the number on the horse that Michelle rode, and they came out of gate one, which is my brother's birthday, and yeah, she won. Yeah, right. So you've got a real. There's a, it's all tied to. It's all tied in. Yeah, full yeah. universe job that one. Yeah, it's a universe job <laughs> yeah. right there. That's it. We'll be putting that into the universe job folder of Kawinky Dink files. Uh, Tony, Druin, wrap this up for us, mate. Kawinky Dinky Tuesday. What do you got? Yeah, um, over Easter I was heading up to uh, Dargo up in the high country, just 
listening to the radio, driving along, mm. and listening to um, Major Look, Megan Trainer's mm-hmm. song, and yeah. just happened to look at the next street sign as I'm going along, and it was Trainer Lane. <laughs> oh. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Don't know if that means yes. orange board short. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's pretty crazy, man. He was trying to line as the next, you know, and that's that's. I like the thought of you listening to this. Driving. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just voguing. Well, yeah, in your highlights. Considering I'm 57, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Tony? I like that so much, mate. I reckon we can we can wet your whistle with a prize. Yeah, Tony. Nice oh, work. Uh, we'll give you a, a family pass to Lightscape. Returns to the Royal Botanic Gardens. Completely reimagined. Tickets at lightscapemelbourne.com.au. Thanks, Tony. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> See you, mate. Kewinky Dinky Tuesday. Thanks for coming on. I've made this little song to round the segment out. If you have another coincidence happen in your life, make sure you make a mental note so you can call us next Tuesday. <laughs> Dua Lipa, Dance the Night. It is a Tuesday morning. You are here with Ben, Liam and Bell. The show's brought to you by What If? It's Aussie for travel and it's time to play this. Ben, Liam and Bell's Fast Fast Travel. Emily and Pasco Vale, are you fast? I like to think so. Are you five? <laughs> five? <laughs> You're not five, are you? Um, not oh, too good. recently. <laughs> okay, yeah, no good, because you have to be 18 plus to win the cash Definitely. here. Uh, but this is the Fast Five, $500 up for grabs. We've got five questions, 30 seconds of the clock, five questions. Just pass any you don't know. Let's get into it. Three, two, one. What breakfast cereal is just like a chocolate milkshake, only crunchy? Cocoa Pop. Is nine a prime number? No. What is the capital city of Northern Ireland? Pass. In which city was the Winter Olympics last year? Pass. What word is the name of the third element on the periodic table? It's also the name of the famous Nirvana song. Pass. All right. Capital of Northern Ireland. Oh, no. You can't pass it twice. <laughs> yes, you can. Nice work anyway, Rose. No, Belfast, of course, uh, for Northern Ireland. Beijing is where the Winter Olympics were last year. That's a bit tricky. And Lithium. You know the song Lithium by Nirvana? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> listen to that as your homework. I will. It must one. admit, I don't know. Do I know Lithium? I don't know that song, but I know the third element on the periodic I'm table so is Lithium. I'm so happy because today yeah, I do found my friends. Oh. Do you? Because yeah. it feels like you just sang what I <laughs> no, sang I know a little bit you, higher. I know the, I know the <laughs> speed of it. <laughs> Next guest is an Aussie icon who's been gracing your screens and airwaves for years. Sure, he's hosted the project, led the Aussie comedy scene, and is more known than all three of us put together. But do we really know who he is? Well, thankfully, he's now getting all the answers in his own episode of Who Do You Think You Are? June 6 on SBS and SBS On Demand. Please welcome... Peter, good morning. Thank you so much for joining good us. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, so good to have you in. And before you did this show, I mean, this is a strange question, but did you did you know much about your family's history? Because I feel like no one really does. Like, mm. it's the sad reality. Like, you, you want to leave your mark in this world, but realistically, two generations out, you've like, your, your own great-grandchildren won't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, they'll know who Pete is. Well, sure. yeah, they'll know who Pete is. They're not yeah. going to know who I am. I yeah. don't know who mine are. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I had a... Um, a rough idea where the part of the world we came from, yeah. Um, like, but I thought it'd be like English and Irish, and I found out. I don't think this is saying too much. I found out I'm basically ninety four percent Irish. I'm very Irish. Yeah, five percent okay. Scottish, and I'll give you a little. There we go. One percent. Where in Africa do you think I might have been from? <laughs> wow. One percent Ghanaian. Oh, I, oh, I've always wow. thought that about now, you. Can't you yeah, can yeah. see that, can't you? You can see that. you know. You wouldn't have guessed it, but now that you know, <laughs> yeah. it makes sense. So for people that aren't aware, like, this show's been around for a while. It's it, amazing. It goes into your mm. history. It's basically, I mean, dare I say, Ancestry.com, but the TV show version. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you hadn't done any digging before this at all. You hadn't put your DNA anywhere. They did no. it all for you. No, I mean, I put my DNA everywhere <laughs> when I was younger. Um, but um, not, not into a kit. Um, and, and, but this is... It 
it is a gift of a show. Yeah. Like, I, if you ever get a chance to do it, I highly recommend it because it's like an, an Easter egg hunt for your fa- family history. And yeah. I didn't know a whole lot about it, to be honest. In fact, we found out some stuff that is just like boggled my mind and, and yeah, shocked me. So we're not allowed to know any of the secrets. The episode, uh, like you heard, it's mm. coming out June 6th. We can't know any of the real big secrets that you found out, but you did find... Some. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you what. Like, I can tell you that uh, I had a great grandfather, and it's it's a massive story, and it's a fascinating story. Um, but he fought at Gallipoli, and I had no idea. Oh wow! wow. And I, you know, I commemorate Anzac Day every day. I read up about stories on on, on Anzacs, and yet I had no idea that my great grandfather actually fought at a really intense level at mm. Gallipoli and wow. has a fascinating story as to how he got there, some weird kind of sliding door moments, and then what happened afterwards. It's it's a it's a really fascinating isn't story. That, it, that's kind of like, isn't that it's such a thing as well, that's kind of sad and scary that that can happen as well. Yeah. Like you, you, know, you talk about remembering so much, and like, of course you are, you know, as you said, but like... That, that fact that that history doesn't make it to you, and that's not, it's not your fault. It's just like, no, well, that's kind of how it works. I'm not know? even sure. My mother didn't know. And yeah, so her, yeah. Her grandfather. I'm not even sure if my uh, my nan, uh, wow. uh, Rupert's daughter, mm. knew that he fought at Gall- you know, Gallipoli. So it was just something that wasn't handed down f- mm. uh, for a, a variety of reasons. It's yeah. fascinating to look back at your family tree and just wonder who's in there. You're not like yeah. a, you don't have any royal ties. I mean, I know you can't say, it, but you didn't you didn't work out. You're like, oh, I'm actually I got a tie of love the impaler or something like that. They don't go back that far. <laughs> no, do they? no, they didn't go back that far. It's funny because when you do the show, because I've seen quite a few episodes, and I know uh, Lisa Wilkinson did one. She went to India. It was a fascinating mm. episode, and I was chatting to her about, it, and I'm like, oh, and I hadn't travelled post COVID, so I was like, oh, this is good. You know, get the passport ready, and uh, yeah. I'll probably end up in Dublin, or you know, it'd be, it'd be great, and. Um, I think on the second day I was in the suburb that I grew up in, uh, Bandura, um, and spent a bit of time in Brunswick where my grandparents lived. Um, and I, I, if I hadn't known that going in, yeah. I would have been quite disappointed. Yeah. But to be honest, it, it, by the end, it did not matter at all because yeah. the, 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 the gifts they give you and the stories they give you about your family mm. are, are worth their weight in gold. Look, maybe you know you weren't on this show. Maybe you haven't even done an Ancestry.com, but maybe you found out a secret about your family. Mm. You, you, maybe your, your family's claim to fame. It's like, oh my God, I yep. had no idea that that person is in the tree. You Consider know, they're, it- they're, they're a distant cousin. Yep. They're my you know, grandma's sister, whatever it may be. Maybe it's a chance to have a bit of a brag on the radio this morning about your family. 13 24 10 is our number. What's your family's claim to fame? Belinda and Karen Downs has given us a buzz. Good morning, Belinda. Tell us your story. Good morning all. Good My morning. dad about 10 years ago decided to do his family tree. He went back to the 1800s, back to England, and our great, like, grandma and grandpa all the way back then mm-hmm. lived in the royal palace because my nan was the lady-in-waiting and her, her husband died um, hanging the royal drapes for the Queen's coronation back in the oh, 1800s. Bloody hell. Oh, my God. Rough gig. Yeah. Yeah. The scaffolding he wasn't sturdy. He broke his neck. Yeah. Oh, 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 very visual. And yeah, here you thank are. You. You know, Karen Downs, so, the royalty yeah, of Melbourne. Do we, do we know... <laughs> sorry, Belinda. Do we know what sort of era of royals that was? Do you know which coronation that was? You... Uh, well, it was in the 1800s. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do you, know, um, do you know if the Queen's drapes matched the... Um, <laughs> no, no, sorry, 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 The regal <laughs> girdle. <laughs> no, no, uh, too much information. That is amazing, Belinda. Thank you very much. Hey, make sure you go see Peter's new show as well, Deconstructed Origami. That's the new one. The next one's going to be 1% Ghanaian. Uh, you can see it at the Comedy Republic June 1 through the 3rd. Visit comedy.com.au for tickets. Peter Hellier, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, legends. For more great comedy shows like this, Head to novapodcasts.com.au.